involved in the civil rights movement, wasn't it? That's correct. Yeah. But here in Jackson, of course, Medgar Evans had just been murdered, and uh, it was a very tense situation. Uh, a, a minister, uh, a Methodist minister, black, uh, Robert L. T. Smith, had wanted to run for Congress, and they would not sell him time. He wasn't asking for free time. Mrs. Roosevelt got after the White House, and they didn't order, but they sent a word down that the White House would like to see him have the time sold to him. He put the program on, and uh, uh, Fred Beard, the uh, manager of the station, uh, took uh, Dr. Smith outside and walked him along the, the river, because the station's right on the river. He said, I'm going to be so sorry when I see your body floating down the river tomorrow. So you appealed, applied to the FCC. You wanted their license revoked, that they weren't serving the community. But the what, FCC did not side no, with your appeal. We, what we asked the FCC to do was to hold a hearing on the renewal of the license and to hold the hearing in Jackson, Mississippi. And they refused. And uh, so there wasn't much you could do about it, uh, because the, the, the public had no standing at that time. But we, we uh, uh, appealed the FCC. And, and, and when you say by standing, uh, just for our, our listeners and, and viewers, uh, you're saying that uh, according to regulatory law, the uh, the FCC did not recognize that the public in general had an interest, uh, a direct interest yes. in a station. Only somebody else who was trying to, who had an economic interest in getting the license or competing with them, could have the standing to challenge that license. Yeah. Right? If 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 uh, you and I had a contract, and I had and I said you didn't fulfill the contract, and I went to court, I would have to prove to the court that I had a right to, to uh, sue you, and the court would give me standing. That's the legal term, to sue. And the public had no right. If, if, uh, and we, we were, were told off very quickly by the FCC. But uh, we, we tried some other things beforehand, but I won't go into all So you ultimately had to go to court. You couldn't get the FCC to deny renewal of the license. No. So we—I uh, we, we, uh, I talked to Orrin Judd, who was the uh, lawyer for the, uh, uh, the church, and a very distinguished attorney in New York. and. He said, well, you know, everybody likes to make new law, and so we, uh, we filed a suit. But uh, they, they hired Paul Porter, former chairman of the FCC, uh, to defend them. And uh, uh, Mr. Judd, being the gentleman that he was, we went down to Washington to talk to Porter before we did anything more. And uh, he kind of threatened us. He said, if, if you do this, he, he and I knew each other. He said, if you do this, Everett, I will carry this out year after year, and I will bankrupt the United Church, the uh, uh, Congregational Churches. And I said, Paul, if th this goes on year in and year out, and you die and I die, the Church will still be in there. And the, the terrible thing was that he did die. He, he choked to death in a restaurant. Uh, on, uh, and, uh, and it was Judge Berger, who then was a federal appeals court judge, who ultimately ruled on your behalf? It, it, Berger was the, the chairman of the panel. Yeah. And uh, to, to make a long story short, we, uh, we, we asked for a, a, a hearing, and the court ordered the FCC to have a hearing on the, the uh, 
renewal of the license in Jackson. Now that that hearing was done before a a uh, at the time they they were not called judges, but now they they're called judges. The FCC has a, a law division that uh, handles things. How did they ultimately get there? We only have about a minute, so I want to ask: How did they ultimately get their license revoked by the court and not the FCC? No, the FCC after the hearing in Jackson which lasted for weeks, uh, the FCC voted uh, five to two to uh, renew the license for a year, knowing that they'd come back at the end of the year and say, we've done all the things you want us to do. And uh, the, uh, the two that, that, uh, that, that voted against this, uh, Nick Johnson and uh, um, uh, another member of the FCC, they they said in their their uh, uh, vote that if if you wanted to get a license uh, of a station revoked, you'd have to go in and steal it at night. And uh, but the so license was revoked. Yeah, the court eventually. It was a thir thirteen year battle, but the the court eventually uh, again ordered the license. Uh, no, no, they had the hearing. Mm -hmm. The FCC then voted again uh, five to two to uh, renew the license for a year, and at that point, Judge Berger, uh, on the morning of the day that he. He was sworn in as Chief Justice of the United States. He filed the opinion, the, the, the decision, and the decision was that the license was revoked. Hmm. And ultimately, uh, Medgar Evers, soon after, great civil rights leader who was soon assassinated, went on the air on the station that had not heard black or broadcast black voices. Well, the, the station. During this this long period of years, it was 13 years before a, the, the, a license was issued. During this period, a group of public people, uh, Aaron Henry, uh, being the, the leader of that, uh, Henry was the one that was was willing to sign the petition with me, so we could go to court, and he was at that time. Chairman of the uh, of the uh, uh, NAACP, uh, the uh, they they this group ran the station. They took over the station. Yeah, and they did such things as as they they put uh, uh, put. Uh, um, Medgar Evers? No, not Medgar Evers. They, my, my, the, uh, the CBS. Randall Pinkston. Randall Pinkston. You he became an anchor, I'm, right? I'm, I'm, my, my memory for names is terrible. Uh, uh, Pinkston was just a young man, and it, it was a terrible chance that he was taking to come on the air and do the news. And in a few weeks, he was the most popular news <laughs> program on the air. Well, Dr. Parker, we want to thank you very much for being with us. Um, on Dr. Parker's retirement in 1983, Broadcasting Magazine hailed him as the founder of the citizen movement in broadcasting, who spent some two decades irritating and worrying the broadcast establishment. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Thanks so much I'm for being with us. I'm still doing it. <laughs> and thank you for taking that history into the present. Okay. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. When we come